Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and very, very soon, if you're watching this before July the 7th, is the launch of X570 and the third generation Ryzen processors. Now, we've already done a lot of content on ATX motherboards, but how about a mini ITX motherboard? Let's take a look. So what we've got here is the Gigabyte X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. The I indicating there is a mini ITX motherboard. So starting with the box, very, very kind of small form factor based on the board. Uh, don't really see too much on the front apart from the all important AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready, which means that it is ready for the new third generation Ryzen processors that will be coming out. Uh, so if you are actually watching this on July the 7th, we will have a full review of this as well. Uh, obviously with X570, you do get things like PCI Express 4.0. Turning the box around, you get a first kind of glimpse of exactly how the board is going to look. Very subtle with the RGB just down the side, like we'd kind of expect on any mini ITX board. Does indicate that we have direct eight phases. Now, eight phases on a mini ITX board is pretty damn special. As we know in the past with Z390, there's been a bit of a hoo-ha about sort of phases and things like that, where a lot of, uh, I guess, companies were branding that they had a certain amount of phases, but didn't. This is a true eight phase design on here. Advanced thermal design as well with uh, the sort of heat sink cooling on there, because with a mini ITX motherboard, you are gonna obviously suffer with problems when it comes to heat. Full PCI Express 4.0, Wi-Fi, and also the uh, audio from Gigabyte with the immersive gaming vibes as they're calling it, ALC 1220VB Audio IC. Now let's take a look inside, going to try and do this all kind of one handed because I'm a bit of a baller, that's how we kind of do things. So opening it up, we've got the board to start with. I'm going to put that to one side because I want to talk about the accessories to start with. So yes, this board as the name would indicate has got Wi-Fi. So we've got our Wi-Fi antenna just in here. We have a RGB cable. So this is kind of your conventional four pin RGB um, connector. So you can connect up strips and that kind of thing. We have some SATA cables, uh, two in there of which one is right angled. And then we have some, uh, what looks like thermal pads, which is gonna be for your M.2 drive. So obviously this has got PCI Express 4.0, can operate at 5,000 megabytes a second and slightly beyond. So yeah, it's gonna get a little bit toasty. We've got the user's manual, and of course, we have a driver CD as well. So uh, other than that, we do get a case badge sticker, uh, Aorus branded as well. So let's put all that back in there and move on to the motherboard. So the motherboard itself, as we can see, uh, just like the name suggests, it is a mini ITX motherboard, the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. So straight away, you're gonna see that in terms of, I guess, ITX, it does look like it has a lot of features uh, in terms of sort of down this area, but around the CPU socket is pretty bare, at least when it comes to kind of, you know, the cooling. Now it does have an eight phase power design, as you can see here, but it's all over to one side. So normally kind of conventionally, we'd see it up here with a sort of another heatsink, but it's just not needed. So there's quite a lot of area around the CPU socket itself. Eight phases just here. And to power that, we have a single eight pin connector, which is a nice little touch. I'd normally expect maybe a six pin connector, but because of eight phases, it needs an eight pin. Uh, other than that, you can see that we have got some extra uh, chokes in that up here as well. Uh, other than that, sort of moving on from the CPU socket, two dim slots like we'd expect on a mini ITX board and nothing else really sort of going on there. So up here we have a fan header just next to the uh, eight pin. That is actually for your CPU fan. Quite a nice location instead of it kind of being here because when it's inside your chassis, you can actually just sort of route the cable through there. Quite a nice little touch. Other sort of fan headers on the board, from what I can see, there is only one more, which is this one down here, a system fan header. In terms of obviously storage, there's four SATA ports on here, uh, which will obviously support RAID as well. And we'll go through all that when we have our full review on July the 7th. We've got a few other kind of connectors. So uh, just up here, you can see sort of your front panel and a speaker connector. As we move further down, we have USB. It says USB 3.0, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be USB 3.1. Uh, we have got our four pin conventional RGB header just here as well. And uh, as we move further down, just having a little look, you can see that we've got a few other connectors here as well. It doesn't look like it from first glance that there is any addressable RGB headers on here, which is a bit frustrating, I guess. But, you know, trying to fit that onto a mini ITX board is always going to be difficult. Cooling on this board is pretty paramount. Because of the eight phase power design, you can see that we have this kind of large heat sink which molds into the rear IO plate uh, and looks really, really nice. Really sort of subtle, a little bit of branding here and there, but nothing over the top. You can see though, extra cooling that we have here. So this is for the chipset as well as the uh, M.2. So underneath here, you can see that we've got this tiny little uh, fan and this should in theory, 
be perfect for the chipset as well as uh, a PCI Express Gen 4 drive, which is gonna kind of sit uh, in between this. Uh, by the looks of things, because we can see the M.2 connector sort of just down here. Other than that, you can see Typical Mini ITX again, one single X16 slot, which is obviously gonna operate at X16 speeds. Now, the only other thing that I really wanna show you on this board, which is kind of around the back, is it has got this kind of armor plate in on there to give you, I guess, an extra kind of, extra piece of stability to the board. Uh, Aorus branded again, nothing sort of too over the top. Other than that, the last kind of thing that I really wanna mention is the rear IO. So on here, it's quite a simplistic design in the grand scheme of things, but it's not really missing anything that I'd expect on a board of this caliber. So we've got a single display port over here. We've got a HDMI port and a second HDMI port here. We've got our USB 3.0 here and here, as well as a BIOS USB 3.0. And just sort of coupled with that is the Q Flash Plus button. So you can actually flash your BIOS uh, just by plugging into this USB and pressing this button. We've got our single uh, ethernet here as well, USB 3.1 type A, as well as type C and also our Wi-Fi connectors and our audio ports. Obviously no optical SP diff, it's a little bit hard to sort of, you know, get that on a board like this. And just down here you can see the audio capacitors. So that's really it, I just wanted to give you kind of a, I guess a first glimpse view of this. Um, I'm actually really, really excited about this board. I do feel that it's going to, do pretty well in terms of sort of performance, especially with the fact that it has this direct eight phase power design. I'm expecting good things when it comes to overclocking. Let me know in the comments section below if this is the type of board that you'd go for and what you think the performance is actually gonna be like. Obviously on July the 7th, we will have all of that information for you with full benchmarks running this with two of the latest AMD Ryzen third generation processors. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know uh, in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one. And be sure to check out all of the other footage that we have, all of the other videos and content that we have on these X570 boards as the launch gets closer. See you later guys, bye bye.